Hi, my name is Lorraine Watry and welcome to my studio. I am a watercolor artist and I've worked with watercolor for 26 years now and I thought I would start a new series of videos where I go over different tips, tricks and techniques for working with watercolor and hopefully these short videos will help you in your journey and if you have a question or a technique that you would like to see please comment below and I will try to accommodate that in a future video. video is uh, going to go over how to create a stormy sky and I had a request uh, by one of my viewers to do this video and so I am going to create uh, a stormy sky that is uh, gray clouds and it kind of has the look of rain happening down at the base of it. I did draw a very basic outline of where some of the clouds might go. It's it's probably not viewable, but it kind of outlines some of the shapes of the clouds in the sky here. And then I decided to add some lightning. So I was just playing around with some marks and I used uh, the Masking Fluid Pen by Holbein. And this is a newer kind of way to mask. And uh, this is says uh, Holbein Utility W479. The first thing that I am going to do is place the color down where there is some warmer tone down at the base where there is probably some sky peeking through maybe some sunset. And so I am going to use uh, burnt sienna and some quin gold. And I have not painted this sky before so I am basically, this would be a color study in um, before I would actually try a painting like this. So I am just playing and hopefully it will work. And so I'm thinking of layers and this first color, I may want just a little bit of some purple in it because I don't want it too yellow. I want it to be toned down just a bit. So I'm going to use a Quin Rose and a touch of Ultramarine Blue to make a purple. And now that I've got that, yellow over here with the Quin Gold and Burnt Sienna in it, I can come in and kind of find the mix that I want. And I think I want a little more Quin Gold, maybe a touch of Quin Rose in there. I want it to have um, not a very vibrant look to it because this is supposed to be a stormy sky. So I will put a little more of the Quin Gold and Quin Rose maybe in the, in the middle and maybe my center area will be a little more vibrant than the other areas. So I cleaned my brush and got the Quin Gold and a touch of the Quin Rose for that center area. Alright, so then I will have to dry that and then I can come back and start working on the next part of the clouds. Get that lower edge. And I'm working on with a block today, so the paper is bound on three sides. This is Arches Watercolor Paper Block, and it's the cold press paper. And a block means that the paper is bound together, and then when you're done with your painting, then you uh, can go to the opening that's usually on one edge, sometimes it'll be on the ends, and you can release uh, the paper by putting either a um, blade in there, or a ruler, or a spatula, or a, not a spatula, a um, palette knife in there to um, get the paper to release. And painting on the, the top surface doesn't um, affect the paper below at all, so I will dry this and I'll be right back. For this particular scene, I am seeing a lot of gray in the sky with some blue. So I'm going to use a mix of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna for the first pass of color. And I will be painting this again in layers. And there are some places that the white of the sky is uh, peeking through and it's really lit in those areas. Um, not the white of the sky, but the sunlight is peeking through um, from above. So I am going to pull out just a little more ultramarine. I already have burnt sienna out. And I'll make a mix on my palette to get 
a uh, kind of medium blue-gray and I'll use a little bit of water to thin it if it's a little too dark. There we go, somewhere in there-ish. And so I can use a variety if I want it a little bluer I can go get some more of the ultramarine or I can pull more of the burnt sienna up if I would like for that to be more prevalent in the mix. And so I'm going to start at the top up here. I was kind of debating whether or not I want to wet the paper. I think I will for a portion of it and then I can... Actually, I might wet... Yeah, I'm going to do this kind of in sections. Um, since I haven't done this particular scene before, I am, as I said, playing. And part of it with doing a painting that you haven't done before is just try things on a smaller piece of paper and get an idea if you're liking what's happening. Okay, so I'm just getting it wet. I am leaving places where I'm not wetting the paper because I want those white um, highlighted areas in the sky to be harder edged. And so I'm just painting water around some of that. And then I will see as I'm placing this on, I feel like that's a little too blue-gray. I'm actually going to go get my warm red, which is Parole Scarlet. And Parole Scarlet, because it's a warm red, will never make a vibrant purple with a blue, but it can make a really great kind of neutral purple. And that is probably what I want. Yep. And now, as I come close to the edge that's right in here where I put my water, I'm going to try to create the edge of the cloud and let it have some variety to that edge and then I might even leave some of the lighter areas in the cloud and I'm going to go back and forth between the purple and the gray mix that I made. So right now this area will have harder edges and later I can soften them if I decide I want them to be softer edged. Okay, and I'll go up into here, there's an area where there's a part of the cloud that pokes up near the, the really highlighted area in the sky, and it is a little bit lighter than what I'm creating, so I think I'm going to use a little water on my brush. And I do have to paint with a little bit of speed right now because the water that I placed on the paper is starting to dry everywhere as I'm painting. And if I have to go back and add some more water, I can do that. And actually, I don't think I'm going to start up there because I have um, wet areas going over here, so I want to keep painting in there first. Let's see. So I'll bring this down, and then it does get quite a bit darker down in here, so I'm going to go into the Burnt Sienna and Ultramarine Blue and get that uh, value darker in there. This will not be as dark as it will go, but it will get me started. And I think I'm going to even go into the indigo that I got out, just to have that going. And this is going to look a little off right now because I need to put in the uh, water that will make it rain over there. But And actually I might even do that now just to try it. But before I do that, I am going to get this edge kind of solved for a few seconds. And then if I stop 
and come back to it, it will be all right. All right, so you can wait on this, I think. Um, it will need more color than what I'm going to put in, and I'm not quite touching. I did there, but I'm not going to... All right, I am touching <laughs> um, the darker color that I put in there, but now I need to come back in with um, some more color. And I am going to let some of that peachy color peek through because I want it to um, feel like the rain is coming down more in the foreground area and that there's um, maybe some sunset color still happening behind. And a lot of this may not make a whole lot of sense yet because generally with watercolor, those beginning layers you're just getting some color on and sort of figuring out what your process is and then you come back and start adding um, layers to it to have it work um, and look like the final vision of what you're painting. Alright, so right now I'm just softening edges so that I don't end up with um, a shape that I don't want. And I do want to um, put a little more, I'm using a lot of my ultramarine and the Parole Scarlet right now. And I want to get this in a little darker. I'm trying to also make my strokes long in this area so that there are um, some areas where you can see the line of the rain. And I feel like I want to go a little darker gray. So I think I will try some indigo in that section as well. I think this is wet enough still that I can come in with the indigo and maybe a touch of the burnt sienna in the indigo. And I'm going to dry the back of my brush and try to get the bottom of this cloud, which is really, really dark in this area, to go in. Now, this may move too much, so I may have to come back later and add to it. I'm going to put some indigo in that corner. So some of painting a, a sky that looks stormy are your color mixes and so I'm using colors that are in the gray and more neutral range and then um, part of it can be uh, the wet on wet feel of blurry edges and possibly the look of rain occurring um, because of those blurry edges. And there are some clouds in here that are more in the purple range. So while this is just a little damp right there, I'm going to put some of that in. All right, now this area over here has started to dry and I could let it dry and then come back and re-wet, but I think I can also work on parts of it that are not um, really touching this area and I will be okay coming into here and doing that. So if you are newer to watercolor though, I would suggest that you uh, dry it at this stage and don't uh, keep um, going by painting in in this area right now because this can lead to some back runs and blooms and messes that are harder to uh, fix if you don't want them so all right so I have 
water everywhere and I'm going to come in with the ultramarine and the uh, Parole Scarlet, but I think I need some more of the Parole Scarlet in the mix. So I got that out. Parole Scarlet is very similar to Cadmium Red, but uh, it is a little more vibrant, a little brighter, and in, um, I don't know how to explain it. It's, it's more vibrant. It's not quite as neutral as Cadmium Red. And it makes a really nice mix with the ultramarine blue. If you don't have the Pearl Scarlet, you could use another red that is on the orange side of reds. And it does kind of look orange when you bring it out, but it is considered a red. Oops, not enough ultramarine in the mix. And I would uh, just play with your color mixes to find the mix that looks right for the sky that you're trying to paint. Sometimes you'll see um, in a stormy sky, especially if there is possible hail um, in the forecast, you might see uh, turquoise colors and that kind of thing as well. So um, they're not always only gray or purple gray. All right, so starting to get on that side. Now this is still just a little damp, so I'm not going to paint in there right now, but I will paint next to. I did come into this area, which it might cause an interesting bloom. So you can use blooms um, in skies to create interesting uh, pushes of color and things like that. And right in here, there's a line where it's uh, lighter. And then I think I'm going to go into my blue-gray mix. And then I will have to dry this next before I do anything else, because the layers need to dry before I start adding more color to them. Okay, and some color in here. This has caused a little bit of a bloom right here where the water pushed into that section. Um, now I did put color in there, but it might uh, push uh, back again and cause um, some color issues uh, or blooms, but we'll see. As I said, I am playing right now because it's just fun to do that sometimes and see what you can create. All right, and then it is raining on this side, so I am going to use some of the ultramarine and the pearl scarlet. And I think I'll go ahead and bring it over to the edge. Now, this is not as dark as that area should be. In fact, it feels like it's darker at the base. And I've grabbed a little bit of indigo there. I'm going to go back into the ultramarine and the Parole Scarlet for just a few more seconds because this is starting to dry. My brush right now does not have a lot of water on it, so it's pretty dry. And as the clouds come down in the sky, they get closer together and look a little flatter. So down in this area, um, I don't want them as round looking. They're, uh, they, yeah, as I said, they look a little flatter and they start to get closer together. I am at a loss for words because I'm trying to paint and talk. All right, so this is starting to have a funky edge right there. So to try to avoid that, I'm going to take my small mop brush, and this mop is actually just a uh, makeup brush that I purchased to use for this. Um, but there are different size mop brushes. And after the color has lost a little bit of the shine where the paper is um, almost dry looking, you can come in with a mop brush and 
use it dry and just gently kind of swish it around over the surface and you can affect the edges a little bit so that they're um, not uh, possibly going to create a bloom. So that helped in that area. Okay, so I'm going to draw, oh, before I do that, I lie, oops, this does have a little bit of an edge there, but that's okay. All right, so I'm going to uh, dry this and then I will come back and um, add the next layer. Now that I have the first layer of color on there and it's uh, dry, I am going to start painting in some of the darker values and making adjustments so that the areas start to make sense. And I will start in the upper uh, left. I do need, I was just trying to think of what I needed to get out. So I'm going to get out some Parole Scarlet and I have the ultramarine blue out, I may have to get more and then because a lot of these um, darker parts of the clouds are uh, not hard edged, I'm going to use water and I think I'll place it in the corner and maybe close to the edges. I won't be going as far over as the edges but that gives some area for the color that I will be putting on to move and I think I'll stay on this left side again for the first part so I'll go ahead and place the water down in through here now this lower edge is a little bit harder edged for that part of the the cloud so I'm going to uh, not put any water on the lower part and maybe just a touch right in there um, and then I need to watch up in here so as I'm placing color on I'm going to go with a smaller brush actually this time because it will hold less paint and water than my big one and so that helps me get darker value and also not put too much uh, water on the paper that could cause the color to move too quickly alright so I'm going to start in that corner because I want to give it a little bit of value up in there And then I know it comes down. right in here. And then there's a little bit of a lighter area right through here. Uh, this one section kind of right in here is just a little bluer not that I have to do exactly as the photo but if I'm trying to follow it somewhat I can put that on and then I do need some more burnt sienna out because I want to use it with the ultramarine blue for a little bit of the lower part of the cloud my blue gray that I made and I am trying to go darker right in here so and leave some of the um, a little bit of the lighter part of the cloud peeking through every now and then because that just makes it more interesting and then as I come down I think I'm going to use the um, indigo but I may put some of the blue gray mix in there as well to kind of vary the indigo a little bit and I have some indigo sitting here so I think I'm actually going to get a little more though all right and then I'm going to dry the back of my brush so that I can control how much water I'm placing on the paper and now as I come down to right about in here this is where I want to um, make the edge harder edged and create the bottom of the cloud there and it has a little bit of variety happening in those edges maybe a touch more indigo up in here okay. 
is a really stormy sky. All right, and then just a little variety in those edges, and I can come back and soften a few of those here and there if I decide I want to do that. And as I come over toward the right, it does start to uh, fade into uh, the water that I placed in that area. And I think I'm going to switch to my ultramarine, oops, ultramarine blue and the parole scarlet mix because I want to go a little more purple in this area. Drying my brush again. And now some of these lighter areas are not quite as um, light on the photo. They're a little darker in the photo. And uh, so then I have to decide if I want to leave it that value or if I want to come back in and adjust them. But for right now, I think this one is definitely going to get some color. And then down at the bottom down here, I'm going to place the cloud in and then I will come back with a little bit of water before it dries so that I can control where the edges are. And there's some... Right in here, I'm trying not to touch that darker value very much. I want a few places where it touches because it can blur down into the color I'm putting on now. Right. And then I will use a little bit of water while this is still just a little shiny. And I can blur... Actually, I'm going to place just a little more water down in here because I'm going to come back and use that in just a second. So I don't have to soften all of the edges, but if I just soften a few here and there, then um, those clouds feel like they're connected to the scene. Okay, and then I wanted a little more color right in here. This is not dark enough, so I'm going to have to darken down here as well. Okay, and then I'm just going to let that blur by using some water on it. Um, I don't think I want to do this section yet because I want this cloud to go ahead and dry before I make any changes around it. And I don't know, I wasn't watching up here, but I bet you you can tell that the color I originally put on up here has lightened enough that it's not, I know it's not going to be dark enough. So I will have to go back in and put this um, shadow that I put on earlier again. And um, this time I am going to go ahead and dry it because that way I'll know that I'm starting with um, the paper where I want it and then I can continue to add some values. So I will do that and I'll be right back. The uh, paper is dry, and again, when you touch your paper, it should not feel cool to the touch. If you can feel uh, that it feels a little cool, then that means that it needs to dry a little longer. And so I am actually going to go back up here right quick and add some more color up in there, and then I will move on to a new area. So I'm just going to place the water on again. And as long as you're brushing gently and you're not putting a lot of pressure, you can place water over other paint that's already on there and not have an issue with, shouldn't have an issue with your paint. It depends, could depend on the brand or if it's a student grade paint, you might notice some of it lifting a little bit and certain pigments sometimes will lift a little bit, if even if you're being gentle. Um, but most of the time, I don't have an issue. All right, so I am going to pull out some more ultramarine blue, and I actually need to refill my well. It's getting very low. I like to have my wells full of paint. All right, so 
start there and I'm going to dry my brush I want to try to get this on and not have it uh, fade out so I'm going to go a little darker this time and we shall see what happens hopefully it will stay where I want it this time alright try leaving that and I'll keep an eye on it but if it starts to lighten while it's still damp I can put some more color on it um, and then I'm going to get some water I will need some of my uh, pearl scarlet out again and I'm just placing a little water at the top of that cloud because there is a little more value up in there but it's not as light as the lower section so um, if I want an area to be darker sometimes I will not put the water on I'll just paint it on the dry paper and I'll connect it to the water that I've placed around it so I put water kind of up in through here and right there and this area right there is without water all right and then I'm getting some more of the ultramarine blue and a touch of the pearl scarlet in there and then drying my brush and I'm just going to use a little bit of that toward the top so that and it is a little darker than I want down in this area so I um, put a little bit of water on my brush so that I don't want that whole area to be that dark and right in here and then as I come down whoops a little more pearl scarlet in the mix on this side a little variety in the pigment color makes it interesting and as I come down to the bottom of that cloud I'm going to switch over and add some indigo to it but I want to get this edge in first because there is a harder edge right there and then it comes over and there's a few little pieces of darker cloud sort of right up in there and to me those all those little um, things happening where you get uh, some clouds laying over top of other clouds makes it feel more realistic and have depth okay so this darker value now is making this lighter value kind of push back a little bit it's not as close to the viewer now and I want to make sure my edges are not too funny looking I don't want any uh, hard graphic shapes up here which I'm seeing little places where I didn't catch it with the water alright and then as I come down I'm going to use a little more of that purpley mix I still haven't placed any color in here which I think I'm going to because I'm I don't want too much white in this image I want it to be um, more on the uh, stormy sky color alright and then I'm going to get indigo on my brush and I'll go back into the two colors I was just using which I need more so the ultramarine and parole kind of purpley color and then I'm adding the indigo to it okay and some of that up in here may have to get some more indigo out and I am using more of the ultramarine and parole now I did place a little bit of water down at this bottom edge because I wanted some of that to get blurry and not be hard edged everywhere and then I'll pull a little bit of that into there there's a line right there okay so now this is starting to get more dramatic and looking more like the sky that I'm working from okay and I want to finish up this section 
there's a little bit of a darker area and a highlight on the edge of it right in here so I'll put that in okay now this piece of the sky does basically the same thing that I was doing before where the upper part of it is a little lighter and then it's got a darker section down below and uh, this did uh, turn out to be a little darker it's definitely darker up in here it's not quite dark enough right there so I may go back over to that area again one more time but that's okay and then um, so I'll go ahead and work in this area and I have not done anything with these edges yet I will go in and soften a few of those in a few seconds and first of all I'm going to get out my parole scarlet and I will pull out some indigo and some ultramarine blue because before I wet an area it's better to have your colors out and ready to go so that when it is wet if you need to start painting right away you're not having to scramble to get your color out and then I should get some burnt sienna out too just in case I want it this part of the sky right now is a little flat because there's nothing really happening in there so I probably instead of adding color to it I will probably lift a little bit uh, up in there to lighten a few parts of it so that it has a little variety going on in within that um, lighter cloud and if I were doing this sky as a big painting I would probably uh, take more time to do the different sections you could also use masking fluid to mask those um, lighter places in your painting so that you're not having to remember to try to leave them but uh, because I am just doing this as a quick study I uh, didn't want to mess with the masking fluid so the only place I masked was right down here for the uh, lightning bolt okay so I'm going to use clear water I've got my color out again and I am bringing it just around the top edge a little bit in there maybe and I'm not touching where I was painting before because I have not dried it so I just want to work on the next area and not have it uh, blur into the upper section and I think I will put some color right in here Okay, so I'm just placing water um, kind of randomly but sort of uh, around the bottom edge of that cloud all right and then a little more of the pearl scarlet in the mix and when I'm placing the color on my paper I am placing it in the direction um, so I don't want to paint it this way I want to make sure that I'm painting it the direction that uh, I'm seeing that um, value uh, lay so it's it's a little flatter so I want to make sure I'm painting it in that direction and in here now there are some hard edges in here but I'm not worried about those right now I just want to get this color on and then I'll go back and I'll soften some of them Right. and there is a little bit of that purpley color a little more of the red in it actually down in here I'll put that in and I think I'm going to leave that little bit of a lighter edge right there and then there are some lighter areas over in here so I want to leave some of that and then I do need to go back and adjust these edges if I want to do it now um, before they start to dry and the other thing I'm going to do before I do that is put a little bit of that yellowy glow right up in this section and I placed that on there but then I came back with some clear water because I didn't want it to be too intense right in there so just a little bit of that okay and now I'm going to take my brush with a little bit of water on it this is just 
barely uh, wet now. It's not real shiny at all and I don't have to soften every edge but with a little bit of water that's on my brush I can go in and just touch those edges and that will blur some of those edges and uh, make them softer feeling. Especially that little shape. And that way I can keep some of that lighter area and also uh, make it feel like it's not a weird cutout shape. And that's also what I'll be doing with those lighter white areas too. And I just put on a lot of water right there. I didn't mean to. So I used my brush to lift some of that back. I might actually get a bloom right in this area, but I think that would be okay. It'll add to the feeling of the, the sky. Now if you wanted a bloom, if you place a bunch of water in an area, it's going to push against the dryer paint and uh, you can get a, a bloom to happen and create a lighter um, area for your cloud. So you might want to use that. In fact, right in here, this part was wetter than the paint I put around it and it did cause a little bit of a bloom in that area, but I think it's kind of interesting because it kind of makes it feel like it's glowing in, in that part of the sky. So last couple places, I'm going to uh, dry this and I'll show you what I would do with a couple more areas and then um, I will remove the uh, masking fluid for the lighting. And this area I want to put, before I dry it, I want to put just a little bit of that purpley color that I made. And I think I may even put a little touch of the Quinn Gold on that too as part of the sunset colors that are in the sky around the storm. Maybe just a touch of that up in there. Okay. So I am going to dry this one more time and then there's a couple more things that I will do. So I have uh, base coats kind of everywhere now and there's a few things that you can do to adjust edges and I usually start with a flat brush that is a little softer and try that and depending on your pigment sometimes that will lift and uh, you won't need to use anything that's a little firmer and that seems to be doing okay but eh, yeah it's alright and then if that's not working then you can use a stiffer bristle brush and I've talked about uh, these brushes in other tip and trick videos um, so basically a brush that has stiffer bristles will give more pressure and you can um, lift some colors easier with it. So I am just going around and softening edges here and there because that way it will give the feeling like there's some really bright light um, around that area and it will make it look like uh, the edges of the clouds are sort of lost in that really bright light. Okay. So I could continue doing that and then the other thing that I can do is I can go in the center of any cloud where I feel like I want to bring some of that um, area back just a little bit. Now depending on your paper, some papers handle this kind of scrubbing better than others. So it's a really good idea to test your paper and make sure that um, it works to do this kind of thing before you would use it on one of your paintings. Um, and student grade paper uh, tends to not handle scrubbing very well. It will tear usually okay. or leave a really weird looking surface. So I can go back into that um, cloud and I can make some adjustments to it just by lifting some lighter areas to give it a little more interesting um, texture. And then the other uh, thing that I wanted to do 
is go to the bottom and move that up. And I'm actually going to switch my paper because I want to do this dark uh, part of the uh, land area where it's really um, pouring, I guess, in that area, and so I want to darken. I don't know that I want to go as dark um, as the image is, but I do want to go darker. And so I'm going to use the ultramarine blue and some Quinn red. And this time I'm not putting water on, well actually I think I will. I was going to say I'm not putting water on the paper first, but I think I am. So I will place the water right on down into there and kind of at the bottom edge of that dark part of the cloud and just bring it over. And then I'm going to go into the indigo. I have the ultramarine blue and the uh, parole scarlet on my brush and I'm going into the indigo for this corner and this side and a little bit across the bottom and then I'm going to take more of the ultramarine and pearl scarlet purple mix for over in here and what I want to do once I get some more color on here and come up right below that cloud is actually tip my my paper and tip my board and I can get some of that pigment to move sorry it's hard to show you what I'm doing um, so that it has the feeling like it's um, kind of pouring down now if that's not quite where you want it then you can come back and add some strokes to maybe get a little more intensity of the mark by using a little bit of darker value. I went and got a little more indigo on my brush so that I could get a little more color in there. Okay. Now once this dries, if this part of the cloud is not quite dark enough, I may go back into that. Um, I do know that I want to go under here because that one has not got enough uh, value and um, I'm going to get more ultramarine blue and I have enough parole scarlet out and I will use the clear water right up at the top edge and I don't know if this lighter area is going to remain or not so we it shall be a surprise to both of us alright ultramarine blue some parole scarlet and drying my brush just a little to kinda of keep the color from moving too much and going back into the area I will get a little bit of the indigo for the Part of this. So, yep, I didn't keep that bloom area, but that's okay. And then I will go ahead and speed up because you can see the basic um, idea of what I'm doing that I'm going back and forth and adding layers and increasing the value here and there, softening edges where I need to, and um, I'm not changing the colors, I'm using the colors that I have chosen and um, just um, using more or less of one of the color depending on the area I'm in. And um, then I will go back and um, make changes where I need to. So. I will go ahead and speed the rest of this up so that you can see uh, the finished process and then I will post the uh, finished painting at the end of the video.
I have now worked around the painting and I placed some uh, layers in in a couple places and then I went back and worked on some of the edges so that I could soften um, different places so that there was a variety of hard and soft edges happening in the sky. And the last thing I'm going to do is remove the mask that I put on for the uh, lightning in this lower left. Now when I remove it, if it is really rough looking or if it is too bright, what I will do is go back and add just a little bit of color in a couple places on here or just by um, softening that edge just a little bit, then it will uh, make it feel like it's uh, more correct for the painting. So the first thing I'm going to try is using a round brush and just kind of wake up some of the pigment that's around the uh, lightning strike and I am not necessarily trying to get rid of all of the white but I do want to maybe clean up the edges just a little bit and um, use a little bit of that color that is around it to uh, basically tone the lightning um, just a little bit and that way it'll have some brighter areas and some areas that are not quite as bright and I tend to like uh, using the ends of a line like this to uh, make it blurry like I did just there or right in here or give it a little bit of color and that edge is a little strong right there so all I'm really having to do right now is just use the pigment that's around the uh, lightning strike it's waking up enough that I'm able to um, make it work for giving just a little bit of color on here and a little bit at the bottom and if it's not quite waking up, there's not as much color down here that I'm able to use, so I can go grab just a little bit of color on my brush. And right in here, it's really wide, so I'm going to use a little bit of pigment. Hopefully I can get close to the value and the color. And see if I can get rid of that wider shape right there. Eh, sort of. It's a little wet is why there's an issue because it was moving too much. Let's see if I can do it. Because I had been working with the water around it before so it was just a little wet. Alright, so now I've got color in there and where that color is too dark I'm actually going to place some water farther out and then touch that color and let it blur into the water around and it will help make that value that I placed on there that was too dark kind of fade and not be as big a deal. And right there, I don't like how it connects right here, so I'm going to See if I can pull a little bit of color pigment down into there, maybe that corner. And there's a piece right in here where the mask was a little rough. There we go. All right, uh, so I think I am done and I hope this was helpful to see all the different parts of doing a um, stormy sky and Basically starting with light values, using water to um, give you hard and soft edges and a variety of neutral colors, but you may have some color within, within the sky depending on what your sky is doing. And uh, you can use mask if you wanted to mask some of those lighter areas and save them and then go back and remove the mask and adjust your edges later. You could do that as well. And uh, it can take layers. So I started with lighter colors and then as I built um, the painting, as I built the clouds up, I needed to adjust and darken layers here and there. So I hope this was helpful. And if you have a suggestion for a tip and trick video that you would like to see something having to do with watercolor, please comment below. And as always, if you'll like and subscribe, it'll help get these videos out for others to see. 
and I will see you next time. Bye.